Today, I want to see if I can take this Raspberry Pi and start turning it into a full fledged home server that'll serve up all the needs of my household. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Havoc. Today, like I said in the intro, we're going to take the Raspberry Pi and see how far we can start to build upon it to make it a true home lab server. What we're going to do today is we're going to install Docker and Portainer on our Raspberry Pi to get our home lab started. The first thing you'll have to do is download the Raspberry Pi imager and we need to set up the OS on the Raspberry Pi. I have a whole video on how to do that, but we'll run through it super quick here. So. Go to the Raspberry Pi page. I'll put a link in the description below of where you can get this. You download the imager for Windows or whatever system you're using, and we're gonna go ahead and install it and run it. We don't need to choose our device. What we're gonna do is we'll choose our OS, and I wanna do headless, so we gotta do the light version. So we'll choose Raspberry Pi OS Other. And then we want the top version, the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. We'll choose that, choose our storage, now here is where you choose your SD card. Me, I have a 64 gig, so I'm gonna choose the top one. Make sure you choose the correct storage media because this software will wipe it clean. Then we'll go next and we want to edit settings or add settings. And I did a different video that you'll see in the whole series where I ended up putting Olama and DeepSeek R1 on the Pi and results were pretty surprising. I'm just gonna call this, um, We'll call it Kova Pi. That whatever your username and password you want there. If you want to configure wireless LAN, you can. I am not going to for this one. And then set your local settings. Mine is Los Angeles US keyboard. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just leave that because you know that's what mine is. Choose whatever yours is. And then we'll click yes. And it says, are you sure you want to do this? Where yes, it's going to delete everything. So we'll let this install. Go ahead and take that card, put it in your Raspberry Pi and boot it up and we'll come back and we'll go from there. Something to note real quick is I actually want to do most of this through um, SSH and through a terminal. And when we went through the process to set up the Raspberry Pi in the imager, I forgot to do the SSH setup. So a real super easy way for you to be able to set up SSH or enable it on your Pi is go into the boot directory or the boot FS on your Pi, which is that SD card, right? So I have it plugged in here to my card reader in Windows and literally all you need to do is right click, go new, we'll create a text document. We need to create a file named SSH, that's it. Nothing in it, no like, you know, .txt or anything. So SSH says, are you sure you want to change the file name or the extension? Yes. And that is going to enable the SSH server on our Raspberry Pi so we can terminal into it. So you can see here, the Raspberry Pi is booted up into the OS and I can log in. But I'm not going to log in just yet because I want to do it through the terminal. So go ahead and either log in here if you want to do it this way, or if you want to go headless, like I'm going to do, fire up your favorite terminal software and go ahead and SSH into it. And here we are, we are SSH'd into our Raspberry Pi. And the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clear this out and we need to do updates. So we'll go sudo apt update. This is gonna start downloading all the updates and we're gonna to work to get our operating system updated. There we go. Now we do the upgrade. So we'll do sudo apt upgrade dash y. The dash Y just makes it so we don't have to hit yes later. Like, are you, you know, sure you want to do this? So saves us a little, a little step there. And once this done, now we can go ahead and install Docker on our Raspberry Pi. So once this finishes up, we'll go ahead and do that. Now that everything's updated, I'm going to go ahead and clear out our screen there and we're going to install Docker. So I have a command I'm going to paste in here. I'll put it in the description below but this is what's gonna install Docker. So curl dash SSL, the Docker, and then uh, pipe SH. So we'll do that, executing the script. It's gonna download it and get everything installed. What I like about these is it just does it for us. It's, it's so nice. Now Docker is all installed, but first we need to give our user access to the Docker group to make sure privileges and everything work. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna paste in this command and it's sudo user mod dash ag docker and then um, dollar user. And that's gonna add our, you logged in account. So in my case here, my account name is Havoc. It's gonna add it to the Docker group. 
and then we need to actually log out and log back in to make sure it worked. So we'll go log out and then we'll just go ahead and reconnect. And now if we type in groups, we can see Havoc is a member of the Docker group right there. And that is exactly what we need. Now it's time to make sure Docker works. So we'll do Docker run hello world and it can't find the image. So it's going to go ahead and download it. And now we have installed and run our first like Docker image. Cause you see right here, hello from Docker. This means your installation works correctly. Perfect. That's exactly what we wanted to do. Now it's time to install Portainer. So let me clear this out and give you an idea here. What Portainer does is it ties a graphical user interface or like a dashboard to Docker. So you don't have to do everything via command line. This will allow you to configure everything via a web page and it's a big help. And I have another video on how to do some stuff uh, within Portainer, but let's go ahead and get that installed. So I'll paste that command in here. It's Docker pull Portainer slash Portainer CE latest. Latest means the most updated version. So we'll go ahead and run that. It's gonna go pull that image down and it's gonna be uh, pretty quick as you can see. And that is great. What we need to do though is we also need to set up a folder or a like a storage area of where all of our portainer data will end up. And we wanna do that because we wanna be able to keep track of where everything is at. So we're gonna run this command here docker volume create portainer underscore data so we're going to call our folder portainer underscore data that's going to create that you can see now we have that created now it's time for us to actually run portainer and there's a whole slew of a big command for this i'm going to go ahead and paste it in here and we'll run through what all this means and don't worry i'll put this down in the description below of where you can get this and copy it, but we wanna do Docker run, and that tells Docker to run Portainer as we go through this here. Um, dash D means it's okay, Docker, you can don't have to do command line, you can do via the GUI. Um, and then P is for the ports, so we need to open up 8000 for Docker um, and Portainer to communicate, and then port 9443, that is how we will access Portainer. What we want to call the Portainer instance, I'm just going to call it Covapi uh, restart. Well, I'll set that to always. That means if for some reason the Portainer Docker image crashes or something, Docker will restart it. And then we need to open the, the sockets. So again, the Portainer and Docker can communicate with each other. And then finally that volume. So we created that Portainer underscore data volume, or this is gonna tell Docker where to put the data. And then the image is the last part. So it's that Portainer CE latest that we just downloaded. So again, I'll put all this in the description below. You don't have to worry about typing all this up, but just kind of want to run through that real quick of what all that meant. So we'll do that and it is running. So now it's time to see if we can log in to the Portainer dashboard. We're at our web browser and it's time to access Portainer. So we want to go HTTPS colon slash slash the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Find that um, over in your router. You can look up the DHCP settings or you can go into um, your Raspberry Pi and, and find the IP address there. And then we do colon 9443. That 9443 is what we set up to be able to access our Portainer. So we'll go ahead and enter and it's going to say it's not private you're trying to use https that's fine we'll do advanced and go and here we are we are at our portainer once the portainer docker container starts you need to create an account pretty quickly you have 10 minutes to do it so go ahead on this screen and type in a username password and click create user now that we're in portainer we need to tell it what kind of environment we're gonna do. So we'll click get started and you can see it's called local here. We'll go live connect. We'll see what containers we have. We have two containers. We have Kova Pi, which is this portainer instance that's running right now. And then we have the reverent right. And that is that hello world we did. And we did it. We installed Docker and portainer on our Raspberry Pi. 
Well, that was a fun one and I hope you enjoyed it. It's really cool that we're able to install Docker and Portainer on a little Raspberry Pi device to really kind of get our home lab started. I'm excited to install some different things on this, like Home Assistant um, and maybe Link Warden, just kind of some basic stuff to run our, you know, our basic home lab. It's not going to do really high end, you know, stuff, but as we get going, we can uh, put some AI on it and see how that runs with Docker going on it and uh, go from there. I hope you all like this video. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to subscribe and hit that bell so you know when the next video is gonna drop. I also have a complete series running a playlist on YouTube that's all about Raspberry Pi and home labbing. So make sure you take a look at that. And finally, on our Discord server, we are building up our tech community. So go ahead and join us at discord.gg slash havoc. And you'll see a couple channels there about tech and home labbing. I hope to see you there. Until next time, stay safe, have fun, and keep doing good. <laughs>